Support Wrestle Talk. We've got some shock Brian Danielson AEW plans in the works. He's probably going to murder someone by having a dream match against someone that we all thought had retired forever. That's how I want to go. Death by dream match. Death by Brian Danielson. Death by Brian. It's a good way to go. Death by schnoo schnoo wins out. If you say so. That's a Futurama thing. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I'm dead. That's, that's hip. That's... that's a current a current reference to make for the kids today. So Shabata returned to AEW on last night's episode of Dynamite. Shockingly so, because why would you be watching Orange Cassidy versus Luchasaurus versus Ray Phoenix for the All-Atlantic Championship and ever expect New Japan Pro Wrestling legend and retired man Shibata to show up and save Orange Cassidy. I don't know, but we got it. How do you feel watching this return? Cut to my reaction from Forbidden Door right here. Oh, who's this? What? Oh my God! Oh my God, it's Shibata! It's Shibata, what? Oh, shit! What? Oh, oh my God! God. Oh, oh my God, it's Shibata! Oh my God! Oh. That's pretty much how I felt <laughs> watching it because I, I woke up this morning and I was getting the tweets coming in just being like, oh, I really wish I could have seen Tempest's reaction to, and I wasn't seeing, I was like, well, okay, there's a spoiler. I'm just gonna watch this show. And sure enough, I'm like, I don't think it was Jeff Jarrett. I don't think it was Colt Cabana. And then we finally get to that bit. Colt Carter. That was, was definitely Colt Carter. That's what they were looking for. They know I'm a big NXT fan. And then Shibata came out and sure enough, that was my reaction all over again. Try and redo the noise. Oh my god! Oh my god, it's Shibata! Okay, that is obnoxious. Um, I, my, my reaction was more like this. What? What's happening? This is such a weird episode of Dynamite. It sure was. But it is undeniably exciting. And we have more excitement to come because Dave Meltzer on the Wrestling Observer Radio has reported this. Shibata told AEW that he had two matches he wanted in AEW, Orange Cassidy and Brian Danielson. So they're going to work on doing both of them. Obviously this, Cassidy was the first one and he's free this week. So they made it this week. Shibata and Brian Danielson. Ooh, that's spicy, isn't it? It is a genuine dream match. It's like everyone thinks Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Danielson, which we nearly got a forbidden door, but Danielson uh, had a uh, concussion, didn't he? was recovering yep. from. But I've never even thought about Shibata and Danielson because it just, it can't happen. It's like saying, oh, I'd love to watch Bret Hart versus Kurt Angle. It's just, mm -hmm. It just can't happen. Yeah, this is a really interesting one because obviously like Brian Danielson against any person on the AEW roster basically is a dream match at this point, whether it's Tanahashi, Okada, Shingo Takagi, or in this case, Katsuyori Shibata, which just didn't seem possible for one reason or another, but we're seemingly gonna get it. And that is, I have no idea what that match is actually going to look like, but I bet it will be great. Before we carry on, I must implore you, subscribe. Leave a comment down below with what your thoughts are on Brian Danielson versus Shibata in AEW. And hit that thumbs up button. It really helps us out here. And also we got Crown Jewel this Saturday, which me and you are doing. So stick around for all of the videos we're going to be making on that, if it goes ahead. If, if that's a big if. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think it'll be useful, just in case anyone's unfamiliar with Shibata, why this is such a huge deal with Brian Danielson. Over to you, New Japan Mark. Hey, that's me. I mean, Katsuyori Shibata is one of those guys that is super legitimate in New Japan. He is a guy who doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles to him. His nickname is The Wrestler. He's a guy who never changed from the straight black tights, black boots, because that's what makes him special. It's the bell rings and he is no nonsense. He is basically the perfect counterpart to a Tomohiro Ishii and their matches are some of the most legendary matches from New Japan over the last 10 years or so. And they're just that hard hitting, hard nosed, will go in there and butt heads and throw forearms and everything. And that was what made him one of the biggest fan favorite guys in New Japan. He had sort of a spotty history with the promotion before that point, but coming back, his ridiculous Redemption arc was really set to culminate in 2017 when he won the New Japan Cup and challenged Kazuchika Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. And unfortunately, 
While that ended up being probably the best match of his career, it was also for a long time the last match of his career because there was a horrifying spot that they really, I'm glad that no one seems to keep doing this, where he grabs Okada's head and headbutts him skull to skull and immediately makes a sickening thud and he immediately starts bleeding, they finish the match, and that's it. That's the end of his career. He had a serious brain injury afterwards. And for a long time, it seemed like that would be it. He would never wrestle again. And you always heard reports that he wanted to come back, wanted to keep wrestling. He was put in charge of the LA Dojo for New Japan. So he was still involved in the business, but not able to wrestle. And then finally, at last year's G1 Climax final, he comes out and has like a five minute sparring grappling match with Zack Sabre Jr. And this is unannounced. Everybody, like his music hits and he's made special appearances before. So people were excited like, oh, what's he gonna do? But he comes out in gear and everyone's like, w what is happening? <laughs> oh, well, what? How is this possible? And he comes out and they have a little grappling match. It only goes five minutes under UWF rules. So no pins, it's just sort of a test of strength and test of skill. And that was it. And everybody then starts theorizing that we could see something more in the future. And he had his first proper match back at Wrestle Kingdom this year against Young Lion Ren Narita. This seems like a perfect warm up match for something more, but we've never gotten the next match. Well, th but that match was not planned, was it? It was meant to be th this, the match this year. It was meant to be Shibata just having quite a short match but he went into business for himself effectively and wrestled a longer match didn't take any bumps because that's hugely dangerous to his condition but he you know he was grappling down there against the like direction of new japan management and since then we have not seen him wrestle in new japan because new japan will not clear him to wrestle so this is now a really interesting walking a line sort of thing here because we have seen a lot of people that we have thought would never wrestle again, wrestle again, whether that be Edge, Christian, there are loads Brian of Brian Danielson. People. Brian Danielson, great example, and probably the most apt example of the lot of them, maybe Christian Cage as well, because it's a brain injury, and they were, uh, you know, they were the recipients of multiple concussions and then being cleared from that after the fact. But of course, Shibata's injury was very serious, should have died could have died and should have died, but didn't, thankfully, thank God. It was, it's different from like what Brian suffered, which was, you know, concussion after concussion after concussion. Right. This was dehydration of the brain, serial, I can't remember the, the exact terms, but yeah, he, he yeah. was very close to, to death. Yeah, it, it is just about as serious an injury as you can get in wrestling without something more tragic happening. Mm. And so it then becomes like, okay, well, if he's not cleared, how cleared is he? Because it's not really, you can't get half pregnant, you know? You can't have him go out there and wrestle these matches where he could seriously hurt himself unless he has a clean bill of health. In theory, people like Brian Danielson are able to go out there because there isn't an increased risk of them hurting themselves. Everybody worries about it, but he's cleared. He can go out there and do what he wants to do. And it doesn't seem like Shibata has been given that same treatment from New Japan, which makes this now in AEW that much more curious. Especially given AEW's track record this year, where I would argue they've brought in quite a few people who, maybe it's not a brain injury or a concussion, but it's a neck injury. It's a history of some substance abuse issues. And stuff has just, you know, like the warning signs are there, but they put them in matches anyway and it has not gone well. I'm talking about Jeff Hardy. Soraya seems like she's going to be medically cleared and wrestle a match against Britt Baker. Um, this is after WWE did not clear her for, for years and years and years. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's an awkward one with Shibata coming in. It, it, like if I was AEW right now, I would be really concentrating on making this appear like a safe place to work. The Hangman Page concussion just a few weeks ago just gonna bring this up. was, you know, that while it was dealt with perfectly, I think it is an, another very high profile injury. So I, you know, I, I think it's a while exciting. I think this is very unwise for AEW. 
It's interesting. It's one of those things where I kind of want to reserve judgment until after I see it because, and this doesn't play in so much for the Brian Danielson match because I can't imagine that match being a soft hitting affair, but you could in theory have Shibata against Orange Cassidy be leaning more into the Orange Cassidy sloth style of things and not make it a comedy match, but take care of Shibata as much as possible. That's not the match that people would want to see between him and Danielson, so I'm curious to see how that plays out. But with the other people, it is sort of a mixed bag. Like, we've heard reports that WWE was offering Soraya matches, so it doesn't seem like the the medical clearing of her was as big a point of contention between them at the end of things as it was earlier on. And then the same thing with, you know, the Hangman Page situation, it was kind of like a freak move that, you know, getting concussed on a clothesline isn't the same sort of injury as some of the other ones where you could look at something and be like, oh, well, that was reckless. Whereas earlier in the year, the word was that Jeff Hardy had his bell rung in Double or Nothing, the match with the Young Bucks, but the match continued on because it wasn't, it wasn't dealt with. This is all sort of becoming not a pattern, but... It is something that you want to be on the good side of. It's not something that you want to make a pattern. And there were a load of injuries this summer in AEW, some of which I don't think are AEW's fault necessarily, you know, just S word happens. But you get into this where it may be perceived as more of a high risk scenario. And do you want to take that risk? And what measures are you going to be taking to prevent said risk? It's really interesting. I'm hoping for the best because my ideal scenario is that Shibata is healthy and able to wrestle again and able to have incredible matches like he did have for all those years. But I don't know if that's the most likely scenario given what we've seen this year from him in New Japan. Yeah, I don't think it will. I'll be very surprised if he is able to do the, the classic Shibata, hard shots, you know, clubs to the back, that sort of stuff. I think this is, uh, other, because if he was, he'd be doing that in New Japan. Right, his, his return angle took mm. place in 2019 against him and Kenta. And it seemed for all the world like we were gonna get Shibata versus Kenta at Wrestle Kingdom if he could get cleared. And that match has never happened. Which is why I think what we'll get here, I think this is, I think Cassidy, like you said, can do a soft style joke match with Shibata, but then you bring up the question mark, well, but that's not really what people want to see from Shibata, but I guess he could kill Cassidy at some point. Also, he'd have to lose. That was another <laughs> bit of this that's curious, because I don't quite see Orange Cassidy losing this quickly, and I don't really think people want to see Shibata lose this match. Yeah, because it's for the All-Atlantic Championship. Yeah. The Brian Danielson match. Brian Danielson was out of action for a long time, and during that time, it sounded like he was always trying to find ways to get back into wrestling, very similar to how Shibata has done. And I imagine part of that was trying to work on a style, and he's talked about this in interviews, work on a style that is very protective of the head, of taking bumps. It's, very, it's pretty much all grapple-based. So actually, I think you could, Danielson is an incredible enough in-ring competitor and artist. And Shabbat is also exactly in the same mold, where they could have an in-ring match which is predominantly grappling, exchanging, submission holds, which is actually very, very safe. You don't do the chops, you don't do any bumps. But again, is that what people want to see from this Shabbat return? That is kind of the question then, isn't it? Because if anybody can do not smoke and mirrors, but adjust an in-ring match to fit that of their competitors, it is Brian Danielson, who is just a wizard in the ring. And I have no doubt that what they can put on in the ring together would be fantastic. It just, yeah, it's interesting. I'm sure any match that Shibata can have would be great because he was one of the best wrestlers in the world at the time of his retirement. But it's interesting to, to look at it and think, well, what do people want to see? I don't doubt that they can give people a match that they would want to see, but it will be interesting to see just exactly what that match will be. It's a bit of a question mark until we find out more. 
Um, I expect the Cassidy thing to maybe set up a Danielson match down the line, or maybe we won't hear anything of him again until Forbidden Door next year, Shibata Danielson is your match. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Are you excited? Are you concerned? Are you like us? A mixture of all those emotions. Let us know and also press subscribe because we've got all the crown jewel fun happening this Saturday. But for now, I've been Ollie Davis. This has been Tempest. Jam the jam.